She starts as a 2x1 and builds up to a compact fortress fully equipped with all the utilities you'll need to thrive in your wipe and defend the wildest online raids. After hundreds of hours of thought process, every single detail of this base has been carefully thought through to intricately work together to maximize defendability and comfort of living at the lowest price possible. She's got aggressive wide gaps that give you even more options to transfer peak, versatile inner peaks that you ask me to improve to combine both tight gaps and regular peaks that still can't be laddered into, slide down roof peaks that allow you to safely loot your body if you die defending your roof, and even more secret tricks allowing it to lock down from the inside that are sure to surprise and throw off raiders, door campers, and deepers alike. This mean little chunker is cheap to build and quite expensive to raid. The cheapest path to raid into the main TC is 26 rockets. If the raiders wanted to full raid you, they would have to throw in an additional 24, raising the total cost to 50 rockets. But that would still not allow them to take control of the base. With 4 external TCs intricately weaving into the main building, they would still have to top it off with an extra 16 rockets to earn the building privilege to seal patch and takeover, raising the final cost to 66 rockets. The compound has 4 entrances, making it really challenging for anyone to door camp you. In here you can place up to 4 large furnaces and have them guarded by 2 auto turrets. There are two entrances to the base. The inner peaks are guarded by 2 auto turrets and wrap around the entire honeycomb 2x1. Going up the two chute entrances leads to the main bedroom. In here you can have up to 4 beds and 4 lockers. Once you have a turret up in here, it's nearly impossible for anyone to push up. However, if that were to happen, notice that you can close these double doors through the wall. This is one of the many tricks that this base offers to help you defend by trapping and separating raiders and deepers. Going down leads to the core of the base. In here you have enough space for an electricity room guarded by yet another turret, 6 small furnaces, a repair bench, a research table, a workbench, up to 4 sleeping bags, 6 large boxes in your main TC compartment, and Shot's famous 7 box loot room which which since the storage update is by far the best loot room in the game. Going back up leads to the shooting floor bedroom where you can have up to 4 more beds and lockers along with yet another turret guarding your rain defense supplies and seal kits. This leads to the two independent inner peaks. In the last video you guys mentioned that you liked the tight gaps but that you could also use some more open peaks. So I worked on that and found a way to achieve the perfect mix. These new improved inner peaks feature tight gaps that offer maximum safety while still allowing to shoot rockets and HEs and regular peaks that are more open but still can't be laddered into. These lead to the full wraparound wide gap shooting floor that offers tons of angles to defend the base and compound. On top of two more auto turrets, there are four slide down roof peaks to defend the roof of the base. Now here's my favorite part of this base. Let's say you got caught with your pants down. All doors are open, someone made it into your inner peaks, and they're controlling your entire shooting floor which prevents you from defending. Well even if you don't have a turret guarding your bedroom yet, you can actually instantly close these two double doors through the walls directly from your shooting floor response and deny them deeper access inside the base. This makes it safe to then also close all four doors of your inner peaks through the walls again and instantly regain partial control of the base. Since each side of the inner peaks is independent, if one side is compromised you can still safely use the other side to defend half of the shell. But that's still not all. In this improved design I have found a way to make this possible for the rest of the shooting floor as well. Now you can close all these wide gap double doors through the tight gaps of the shell to gradually regain control of the actual shooting floor. This inside out lockdown system gives you tons of possibilities to regain control of the base and come back from the most dire of situations. In the last video, a lot of you guys asked for a way to tour the base in person and I didn't know how to do that until Eskitit showed me the Builder Sanctuary servers. So now if you log on there and use the code 5q1q72, you'll be able to load the base and tour it yourself so you can get a feel for it before you commit to a wipe. Alright now without further ado, I bring you the Sanctuary v3, let's build her up. Start by building a standard 2x1 with triangle airlock. If the area you built in isn't too grubby, try and keep the single door frames and the ceiling of the airlock wood to make it easier on yourself to soft side wood will expand later on. Upgrade everything else to stone. Place your TC on the same side as the door frame. This will make your core a lot easier to get around. In this starter unit, you should be able to place two large boxes. If you place your double door opening towards the single door, it will create a second airlock. You can now place a tier 1 workbench, a furnace, and up to 4 sleeping bags. Add a shelf to the main TC compartment like this.
Now you have room for two additional large boxes. You have now completed the starter unit. This could easily carry you all the way to tier 2, but you're only 3 doors to TC, so if you make some enemies, you're probably going to want to expand. First, honeycomb the core. Then build the first floor like this with the jump up on the short side. You can now soft side the triangle airlock door frames and ceiling and close it off with a wall. Picking up the airlock bag allows you to place three furnaces in the core jump up. Don't forget to place that bag back down on the floor above. If you've got a lot of ore to smelt early, you can also fit three more furnaces in the first floor jump up. Once you have ladders researched, you can build the chutes. Start by honeycombing the second floor loot room. Then build a chute entrance on each side of the base. Line up the last bar of the ladder with the top of the wall to place it perfectly. Then surround the rest of the bedroom floor with walls. This short end of the 2x1 will be your jump up to the shooting floor. Feel free to build an airlock up there following the same pattern. Eventually this will be your shooting floor bedroom, but there's no need to go further for now because we need to build the inner peaks first. Placing double doors opening outwards in these two spots allows you to close them from the inside.
Now, this is as far as I'd recommend going with the tier 1, so from here I'm going to assume that you have a tier 2. And to make this video easier to follow, I'm also going to upgrade everything to its final state. As soon as you can afford it, upgrade your core to HQM. Once you have them researched, you can place two garage doors. Picking up this bag and moving it to the floor above allows you to place a research table and two more large boxes. As soon as you can afford it, upgrade your first floor jump up to HQM. On the second floor, upgrade everything to sheet metal. Shot 7 box loot room only works with the garage door, which is not a blueprint that you'll always have when you build the first floor. So remember to always build this triangle ceiling before you build the door frames of this floor, because once the peaks are up, you won't be able to build it anymore, and we're going to use it to bring a triangle shelf into the loot room. Once you have the triangle ceiling in there, you can safely build the double door frames and place 3 garage doors. When you're ready to complete your loot room, you can use the triangle ceiling to bring the shelf into the square like so. If you can't build, it's because of the bags, so you might have to temporarily pick them up. If you don't know how to build shot 7 box loot room, this is how you do it. Begin by placing the first 4 boxes in a standard square formation on the floor. Then build your triangle shelf. Then place the 5th box as far as you can on the tip of the triangle. This will allow you to perfectly place the 6th box, which is the hardest one. Now you can easily place the 7th box. When you close the garage door, if no box sticks out, you did it right. Congratulations, you now know how to build shot 7 box loot room, which since the storage update is by far the best loot room in the game. Once that's done, build a window frame to close off this triangle. This will become your electricity room down the road. This allows you to place a repair bench with two small boxes next to a barbecue small box combo. The jump up to the main bedroom should be at least sheet metal, but if you can afford it, make it HQM. The floor above will be your main bedroom. Pick up these two double doors and upgrade the entire floor to sheet metal except the shoot triangles and shooting floor jump up. Once you've built these three double door frames, you can place five garage doors. And here you can have up to four lockers. If you choose to cover these two lockers with embrasures, remember to use horizontal ones so you can still close the double doors to the walls. Now you can place up to four beds like so. Since you don't have much of a shooting floor yet, it's not necessary to do right away, but if you can afford it, upgrade the jump up to the shooting floor to sheet metal and replace the sheet metal door up top with the garage door. Alright, now that the base is fully furnished, it's time to build the inner peaks. First, we have to build the inner peaks external TCs. Build a triangle foundation of the short edge of your honeycomb 2x1, then 8 squares. Demolish the first 7. And then build all the way back using triangles. Upgrade these three triangles and demolish the rest. Off the third triangle, build five squares and then two triangles. 
Build your TC compartment like this with the door facing away from the base. To make this TC disconnectable, we have to follow Mini Satori's design, which requires the back wall is actually made of two half walls for stability purposes. Demolish the first four squares starting from the TC compartment and upgrade the last one to stone. On this square, build your compound airlock like this. Single doors make it cheaper and funnel traffic in and out of the compound making it easier to defend. Double door frames can be subsided and give you more cover when open to defend the outside of the compound. You can now build these four ceiling frames. These are the disconnectable T ceilings. Now if you get raided and lose your main TC, you can simply disconnect your externals with a twig roof like so and replace the main TC in the core. Thanks to Mini Satori, the Rust community won't have to break an external TC ever again. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Most importantly, and I can't apologize enough to you guys for missing that in the last video, make sure to build these two double door frames on these two triangle foundations. You might think they're connected by looking at them, but without these two door frames, they're actually not, and if you don't have them, the peaks will decay. Now you can build the inner peaks foundation footprint. This time I've changed it a little bit and it pays off big time later on. Off the long side of the honeycomb 2x1, build a square with a triangle on each side. Of the inner peaks TC arm, build a triangle, square, triangle. Reproduce the same of the other TC arm. Now you can build up your shell, build a double door frame on each end of the footprint and surround the rest with three levels of walls. Now you can build your inner peaks. Of each long edge of the honeycomb 2x1, build three triangle ceilings. Then a square attached to the core on each side. Then fill the rest with triangle attached to the shell.
Now you can complete your shooting floor bedroom. Following the same pattern as below, place two sheet metal double doors in these two spots opening outwards so you can close them from the inside. Place three garage doors in these spots. Up here you can have up to four more lockers. Once again, if you choose to cover these two lockers with embrasures, remember to use horizontal ones so you can still close the double doors from the inside. Now you can place up to four more beds like so. This last triangle will house an auto turret guarding a large small box combo where you'll have your rain defense supplies and seal kits. Now you can finish the inner peaks. Build a wall in front of the door, two window frames on each side, and a double door frame on each end. Attach every ceiling to the honeycomb 2x1. Upgrade the wall and ceilings to metal and the rest to stone. Place a double door opening inwards in each double door frame. For the time being, you can cover the window frames with vertical metal embrasures, but eventually we'll have strengthened glass windows here. Reproduce the same on the other side of the base. Make sure to build double door frames going up from the bottom of the shell in these four spots to prevent riders from laddering up to take control of your inner peaks. These serve a dual purpose as they can also be used to section the inner peaks. Chain link fences are perfect here because they will prevent riders from easily boosting over the doors while still allowing you to shoot through. As you can see now, there's no going through these gaps. Raiders won't be able to ladder up, and there's also no falling down like a Pepega. Now, if you've placed all the double doors correctly, you should be able to close everything from your shooting floor response, denying your enemies any attempt at going deeper inside the base, and even potentially trapping them inside the inner peaks. Now we're going to build up the roof access and roof peaks, but to do so, first we have to build the shell airlocks. Now you can build two levels of double door frames to provide the stability needed to build the roof peaks. 
were produced the same on the opposite side of the base. Now you've got the stability needed to build the roof peaks at the first part of your shooting floor like so. Try and attach these squares to the core. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Now let's take care of the wide gap peaks. First we have to build the wide gap external TCs. Of each square coming off the long side of the honeycomb 2x1, build 3 squares then a triangle. Demolish the squares then build back towards the base using ugly triangles. Upgrade the last triangle and demolish the rest. Of the upgraded triangle you can now build 6 squares then 2 triangles. Build the same TC compartments as before. Remember the wall facing the base is made of two half walls to make Mini Satori's disconnectable TC design function. Demolish the first four squares coming off the TC compartment and upgrade the last two ones. Build the same compound airlocks to give you the stability needed to complete the disconnectable ceiling frame links. Remember 
were produced the same on the opposite side of the base. Of the first square, build four triangles on each side, upgrade the ones facing outwards and demolish the ones facing toward the base. Reproduce the same on the other white gap arm. Now that you have the white gap footprint down, you can actually close the compound which costs 16 walls and 4 metal barricades. Now you can build three levels of double door frames off your white gap footprint to support your shooting here. You can now complete the white gap up top like so. Surround the white gap with window frames that attach the ceilings to them. Move the embrasures from the inner peaks to the white gap and fill the inner peaks window frames with strengthened glass windows. Reproduce the same for the other white gap. Adding double door frames in these four spots gives you the stability needed to build roofs above to close up the ceiling gaps. To do so, build a square roof followed by a triangle of each side of the white gap ceilings. Building a square roof of the honeycomb 2x1 prevents them from connecting, which allows for more peaking advantage from your roof. Finish with a square roof in these two spots and upgrade everything. Reproduce the same on the other white gap to complete your roof. Your roof compound and core are now fully defendable despite not having any turrets yet. So now the next step consists in wiring a ton of them. Build two windmill towers like so. The single door frames are for vending machines for future drone shops. In 
the electricity room place a large battery, a root combiner, a switch, ideally a smart switch if you have it researched, and nine electrical branches. The windmills go into the root combiner, which goes into the battery, which goes into the switch, which goes into the first electrical branch. You're going to want to go power out, power in every time, and branch out 10 power to each turret. A large battery can power up to 9 auto turrets, but depending on the elevation of your base, a single windmill might not provide enough power, which is why I'm adding 2 in this version. This is where I'd recommend placing the turrets. On the first floor, to defend your electricity room and the biggest chunk of your loot. On the locker floor, to defend the chutes and your main response. Two in the shell in front of the chute entrances. These are probably the most important ones. On the top floor, to defend your shooting floor response. Two on your roof for a surprise opener in case of a top-down raid. And two in your compound to defend your large furnaces and oil refineries. Once you have everything wired up, you can upgrade the window frame to stone and fill it with a reinforced glass window. Congratulations, your base is now pretty much complete, but there's always more to be done. For instance, your roof is the perfect place for a heli garage and some drone shops. Your compound, on the other hand, is the perfect place for some large furnaces and oil refineries that are now guarded by your auto turrets. Once you have a tier 3, replace your tier 2 in the core. If you placed everything perfectly, you shouldn't have to pick up anything. Ideally, you want your whole honeycomb to be sheet metal. But if you can't afford it, HQM your electricity room, because if the raiders brute force raid from the wrong side, your turrets will go offline and it's pretty much GG at that point. If you need more loot room, you can also always place a ton of boxes in the shell. Now the reason why we have the doors facing this way on the externals is so you can add extra modules to the base. Remember that you can build these as early as you want, so if you have a tier 2 but no compound yet, a large furnace base could save you a lot of unnecessary wood farming.
Flag bases are essential to successfully defend the raid, so if you wanted to add some external bedrooms, this is how I would recommend doing it. Cars were buffed once again with even more storage, so if you want to add a car garage, this is how you do it. Remember, you need to build at least a 2x3 to fit a car lift. You could also build a horse base, a farm base, imagination is the limit really. Anyway that's it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video, I put a lot of effort into it so if you learned anything today I would really appreciate if you leave a like, it does help a lot more than you think. If you have something to say, I'd love to read it, I heart and reply to every comment so don't be shy let me know what you think. Coming up I know a few of you guys have requested a 2x2 version of this base so I'm going to work on this now. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you in the next one.